Give me 10 minutes of your time and I'll help you to get your garden looking great. Hello, I'm Jane Moore and welcome to the June Still Garden Guide. I'll be with you every month giving you information and ideas for your garden from my garden. So make sure you subscribe to the Still GB YouTube channel so that you don't miss a thing. This is the month for planting out all those slightly tender plants and having held off all through May, or most of it anyway, I am now planting like mad. What to plant? Well, it's all the bedding favourites like pelargoniums, lobelia, verbena and so on. All the lovely stuff for pots and containers. But back to that in a minute. But it also includes all the half-hardy plants like cosmos, salvias, nicotiana and so on that are just great for dropping into any gaps in the borders like this one. I try to plant densely. You've probably noticed that it makes for a lot less weeding. But when the bulbs die back, you sometimes get a gap open up and things like this cosmos are just great fillers. I'm just going to pop this one into this gap here. This little plant will settle in and will give me plenty of flowers for the rest of the summer. Well, into October, usually, which makes it really good value. Don't forget to water it though and give it some slug protection too. But a bit more on that later. Back to bedding plants. Now these are easy and fast growing, which is brilliant for pots and containers and hanging baskets. I'm not a great fan of hanging baskets though, far too much watering required for my taste. But pots and containers, I just love. I do like to mix it up a little bit though, using shrubs and perennial plants to add a little something extra to the show. A few quick tips to remember. The bigger the pot, the happier your plants will be as they have more room for their roots and a greater sort of volume of compost, peat free of course, to hold water, which means that they'll just last better through the summer months. Make sure that the drainage is free. You don't want your plants to get waterlogged at all. Raise the container on pot feet, bricks, or even just blocks of wood. Add some wool pellets to the compost to help to retain moisture, as well as a slow release fertilizer. Unless you're absolutely brilliant at feeding your plants, and I'm not, I often forget, and these plants really need regular feeding to keep on flowering. This slow release fertilizer really saves me having to think about it. If you can, try and choose plants that like the same sorts of conditions and that will suit your garden. I'm going for absolute sun lovers because my patio is south facing and it's really hot. So things like um, this, these pelargoniums, petunias, catmint, will just absolutely love it as well as a lot of grasses. And some foliage does a brilliant job of highlighting all the flowers. If you wanna go really Mediterranean, you could even add a few succulents to your pots. For shadier parts of the garden, you could choose something like this hydrangea. They're great in pots for a couple of years. And so are hookeras and of course, things like ferns. Other good shade choices are begonias, verbena, busy lizzies and hostas like this magnificent one, which will make quite a statement in its own right. Besides all the flowery, tender plants, there are quite a few vegetables that are a bit on the tender side, and these need to be planted out now. Runner beans are the ones that people always plant too early, and I think that's partly because they look so strong and robust, but they're actually not. They're native to South America, for goodness sake. But you also can't take any liberties with things like courgettes, pumpkins, or sweet corn even. These need the warmer temperatures of June for they're actually ready to be planted out. First though, you need to harden them off. And that means acclimatizing them to the great outdoors. 
by gently introducing them to the outside temperatures over the period of a few days or maybe a week or so. Simply bring them outside during the day, taking them back in again indoors for the night time. After a few days, you should be able to leave them out all night unless the temperatures drop. So keep an eye on the weather forecast, in which case you need to get them tucked up again inside temporarily. Once you've planted them out, we're back to that question of protecting these tender new plants from the attentions of slugs and snails. Although many slugs and snails also actually do good work in the garden by helping things to decompose, but realistically, most of us gardeners regard them as something of a nuisance, something we would really rather live without. So I said I'd come back to control methods and here are the options for you. The key thing with these plants is to protect them for long enough that they become established plants that grow big and strong, outstripping the slugs and snails. That means you only need to protect them for maybe the first few weeks, probably less than a month in most cases. After that, they'll be off growing away strongly up their canes or what have you, out of the reach of the slugs and the snails. These are your choices to protect them. Slug pellets, much maligned, although these ones are organically approved. They do work, but you must use them sparingly as they work far better that way rather than using lots and lots. Biological control, nemeslug or something similar. These are a great option for raised beds like this one as you can treat the whole bed and one treatment will last for around about six weeks, which is plenty of time for the plants to actually establish. Beer traps work brilliantly, but you have to keep emptying them and also you've got to keep them freshly topped up too. Finally, you can use an actual deterrent such as crushed eggshells, coffee grounds and wool pellets are pretty good deterrent too, but you do need to check them and keep them topped up from time to time. You can make an actual ring around plants you want to protect or conversely, you can put them around the plants where you think the slugs and snails are hiding to keep them contained. This wall is an absolute haven for slugs and snails, so I've actually added some grit at the bottom to try and put them off. Of course, the more birds you attract into your garden, the less that slugs and snails will be a problem. And that's because so many garden birds love to eat them. Thrushes, starlings and blackbirds will all eat slugs and snails. So keep on feeding them and make sure they have some water to enjoy after their meal. By the way, lots of birds, including blackbirds and thrushes, prefer to eat on the table or on the ground rather than from a hanging feeder. So give your birds lots of options. My last job for today is to get on with staking some of my taller growing perennial plants. These are growing fast with lots of lovely lush growth that might make them collapse, especially if we get some heavy rain or strong winds. Staking them fairly early on is a really good idea as the plants will grow through the support and hide it. I probably should have done these peonies a bit earlier, but better late than never. Staking later on is often a bit tricky and messy as the plants might break or look a bit sort of strangled. So do as I say and not as I do and do it early. I really hope you've enjoyed these gardening tips and you're all fired up to get out in your garden this June. 
Let us know what you're up to in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the Still GB YouTube channel for more ideas in July. See you then.